iCloud is Apple's powerful cloud service that can be purchased either through Apple One or is a separate product. Most users use iCloud for the typical stuff like uh, backing up data and a storage for photos, files, etc. But this service offers a lot more than that. One example is the ability to store video data from security cameras. And the best part is that the data doesn't count towards our general iCloud storage. That is a really handy feature, but in this video I would like to highlight three very useful iCloud features that I don't see a lot of people using. And that's email aliases, custom email domains, and finally the hide my email feature. Let's talk about it. Let's start with the custom email domains first. This feature is great for freelancers and small businesses. Instead of using a dedicated provider for a custom email address, we can just use iCloud. We're already paying for the feature, so we might as well use it. So let's say I just bought my domain name, marvelousdecay.net. I could use a free Gmail address and have an email like uh, marvelousdecay at gmail.com, but that doesn't look professional. I would like to have an email using the actual domain name, something like info at marvelousdecay.net. On top of that, it's good to have different email addresses depending on the use case. For generic business inquiries, clients can use info at marvelousdecay.net, but when I'm answering emails, I would like to use my personal address, something like demetrius at marvelousdecay.net. Google has business accounts that offer this type of functionality, but of course it comes at a cost. So here's where iCloud comes into play. We can connect five different domains to our Apple account and up to three email addresses per domain. That is really, really good. If we were to use Google Workspace for all these domains and addresses, we would have to spend hundreds of dollars per year. But even if we're going to use the service for just one domain with a couple of email addresses attached to it, iCloud is already good value for money. So let's see what we need to make this work. First off, we need a domain name. Apple offers the ability to purchase a domain through Cloudflare, and it's actually really good value for money. I'll show you the process for that later on, but for now, let's say that we already bought a domain through a regular service like uh, GoDaddy, Wix, Squarespace, etc. We now need to infuse that domain name with the right settings for our email, and that's done by modifying the DNS records of our domain. A DNS record is basically the identity of a domain. It holds all the information for the DNS server to know what to do, where a website can be reached, where to look for FTP or mail subdomains, etc. It sounds scary, but I promise you it's really simple to do. This is how a DNS record looks like, and all these records, A, C name, text, etc., give instructions for different things. This approach allows for a lot of flexibility. For example, this is a domain I bought through Wix, but it's not pointing to my regular Wix website. It's actually pointing to the store I use on this YouTube channel. So we can basically mix and match services however we want. Okay, so now that we have the basics down, let's see how we go about connecting our iCloud to the domain name. We need to go to our iCloud account and start setting things up there. I'm going to use the website version of iCloud, but we can go through this process on the iPhone and the iPad without any problems. The feature we want to use is called custom email domain. Here I have it on the dashboard, but you can normally access it through this menu at the top right of the screen. We'll select the add a domain you own button, since we already have a domain. And on the next screen, we can choose who can use it. This is another cool feature because it allows us to have up to five other members use that domain, other family members or other employees in the company. So we can have Demetrius at MarvelousDK.com, Sarah at MarvelousDK.com, and so on and so forth. For now, let's pick the only you option. Type in the domain you want to use and hit continue. If there are any emails linked to that domain, we can input those on this next step. But if there aren't any, we can click on the no email addresses button. Once we complete the whole DNS setup, we'll come back to this step. That's when we'll pick all the email addresses we want. 
Now, the next step is when Apple gives us all the information to correctly fill out the DNS records. These settings are for email only. A complete DNS record will have info for the actual address, FTP details, etc. So now it's just a matter of copying and pasting these details to our DNS record. I'm going to use Wix to modify the records since I bought the domain from them, but the procedure is the same for any other provider. Let's start with the MX records first. Wix has some presets for Google Workspace and other services, but since Apple is not included in the options, we'll just go with other. One thing to keep in mind is that different providers want slightly different formatting. For example, here I'm not copying the dot after dot com. Wix doesn't need it, but others will. But don't worry about it because if the formatting is not to the service's liking, they will let you know, so there's zero chance you'll make a mistake. We follow the same procedure for the text entry. Just copy and paste. Simple as that. Now here's the interesting bit. Notice that the next entry is called SPF. The Wix record doesn't have a grouping with that name, but Apple's pop-up dialog lets us know the type of record it is. And since it's a text type, we can just add another record on Wix's text field. Notice that I'm not using the at symbol at the beginning of the domain because Wix doesn't require it. Others might though, so just keep that in mind. Let's now move on to the next entry, which is the DKIM record. This is a CNAME type, so we add another entry on the CNAME group. If you want to know what each of these entries do, you can easily search them up on Google. We're not going to go through that in this video, but what's good to know is that you can actually search any website's DNS records. There are several websites that do this for us, and this can be really helpful because you can quickly see when your modified DNS records went live. So now that the DNS record is modified, we're ready for the next step. iCloud will give us a pop-up to make sure that we've edited the records. If something's off, it will let us know which entry is missing or is incorrect. In some cases, there might be a delay from the time we adjusted the DNS record to when it went live. So even if you get an error from iCloud, just wait a few more seconds and retry. And now comes the fun part, creating your new email address with your domain. Just pick whatever name you want and that's it, you're all set up. You can now use that email address for correspondence. Let's test it out. I'll send an email address from my Gmail account to this new email address. And as expected, the email is successfully delivered. Perfect. The emails will show up on the regular iCloud account. In case you don't want to have your personal emails mixed up with business emails, there are two ways to go about it. One will work on the Mac only, and the other one will work no matter your device. And that's because we'll make changes on the server side. Let's start with a method that only works on the Mac. It's the one I personally use and it's super simple to set up. To make it work, we'll use Mail's smart mailboxes. With smart mailboxes, we group together emails based on rules. Let's see how that works. Click on the plus icon to create a new smart mailbox. And on this pop-up is where we'll create our rules. We have a ton of options to choose from. The first thing we need to set up though is whether the mailbox should take into account all or any of the conditions below. So if you want to have more than one email addresses end up on the same folder, you should pick any. Let's now set our conditions. So we'll choose any recipient, contains, and then our email address. Here's how my smart mailbox looks like, it basically grabs all the email from any of these email addresses. Something to keep in mind here, the emails are not moved from the general iCloud mailbox, so they will still be there along with all other emails. A smart folder is just a grouping tool, a way to have specific emails all into one place. If you don't want to see your business emails in your regular iCloud mailbox, you'll have to apply some server-based rules. Which brings us to the second method. This one will work with all devices, not just the Mac and the Mail app. So let's go back to the iCloud page and click on the Mail application. Click on the cogwheel icon and the option we want is the Rules tab. 
The rule here is exactly the same as before. Move whatever message is addressed to this email address to this mailbox. And that's it. One thing to note here is that this rule applies only to newly received messages. It won't move any of the older emails we might have received. So we have to manually move those ourselves. It's not a big deal, I'm just letting you know so you won't get confused when you only see one or two emails in your mailbox. So that's custom email domains. Before we move on to the email aliases, let me quickly show you the process when buying a domain name through iCloud. It's super easy. Apple sends us to Cloudflare for the domain purchase and I'm actually glad they're doing that because Cloudflare is one of the few companies that sell domains at cost. There are no markups or anything of that sort. Through Cloudflare, I paid around 9 euros for a .com domain. That's in stark contrast to Wix or other providers who charge 15, 17 or 20 euros per domain. Usually the first year is heavily discounted or even free and the second year is where they jack up the prices. And they also try to upsell you with other unnecessary features through UIs that scream dark patterns. But that's a whole other video. Anyway, so as you can see, the process is super easy. You can log into Cloudflare with your Apple credentials, you fill in your contact and business details, and you're good to go. The other benefit of buying your domain this way, apart from being cheaper, is the fact that Cloudflare will autofill the DNS records for iCloud. So there's nothing else we have to do from our side. So that's custom email domains. Let's now check iCloud's other cool feature, email aliases. We can create three different email aliases per iCloud account. These will always end with at iCloud.com. Why would you need another email address, you might ask. I personally use email aliases for things I don't care about. Newsletters, website logins, stuff like that. Basically, it's a good way to not expose your regular email address to the world. The other benefit of that is that it's easy to get rid of spam. So once you start noticing that a certain email alias is getting a lot of spam, you can just delete it and magically all your spam will disappear. The spam email won't be forwarded to your regular iCloud address and instead it will be returned to sender. To set up an alias is super simple and you can do it from all devices, Macs, iOS and the regular iCloud portal. Go to settings, your profile, iCloud account, and then select iCloud mail. Email addresses is the option we want. And then at the bottom, we have the aliases section. Type in whatever name you want and you're good to go. I would say this is the old school way of doing things, but I still use this method to this day. The next generation of this though is the hide my email feature. With hide my email, we can go even more granular, which can be very beneficial. In this case, we don't control the name of the email address ourselves. The names are generated automatically. So when you sign up for a newsletter or website or whatever else it might be, you will get a pop-up that will ask you if you want to obscure your email address. If you pick that option, hide my email creates an address with unique random characters. We can even create a new address beforehand, but again, we have no control over the naming. Hide my email is great because it's even easier to isolate bad actors. Because each service you sign up for could potentially use its own unique email address, we can easily go to the settings and disable forwarding. So we won't receive any emails from that entity anymore. To summarize iCloud offers three distinct features that allow you to set up emails and your privacy exactly the way you want. Even if you won't use all of these methods, I would say at minimum, take advantage of the custom email domains. It's a service that can get pretty expensive in other places, so if you're already using iCloud or Apple One, just set up your custom email domain there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.